waiting patiently outside the ABC for an interview. Michelle! Oh, sorry. <laughs> And is that the correct terminology? That is the correct terminology, and our favourite response to that is because we can. <laughs> <laughs> it is something that not many people in the horse world can do. Uh, it's something that I guess we would love to be able to do, but it's taken us many years solid training to, to get to this point. So it's, it's a real thing that to be able to do. my childhood. <laughs> uh, to make them giddy up, we just use our legs. We just squeeze their sides a little bit, use our bodies. Actually, really all we have to do is think forward and they'll move forward. And to stop, it's very similar. Again, we use our bodies. Sometimes if we need a little bit extra, we might go whoa. <laughs> but uh, generally they stop just with the use of our bodies. So they're like, you have such a strong relationship with them, I guess, that they're, they're kind of it would appear so. <laughs> and if you look, if you look at, we uh, just recently put up a, a video, which Susie will tell you about, but you'll be able to see her horse, Cooper, reading her mind, looking left and right. Excellent. I look forward to seeing that. Now, now Jill, it seems like um, the three women, the three of you, are as different as the three horses. What training are you doing for this? Um, well, we've been getting up very early in the mornings and doing rides nearly every day. Weekends, we're having longer rides. Now, two of us are morning people, one is not. <laughs> we tend to wait for her to wake up about 10 o'clock. She starts feeling a bit more chirpy and bubbly. Um, we are all very different. Susie can be quite bossy, which is very good because we need someone to give us a push every now and then. Robin can be a little bit blasé, which is also good because sometimes we need to just let go of the wrists and actually try something. I can be quite obstinate, not always a good trait, but sometimes, you know, if I'm on the right track, then yeah, it ends up working quite well. What are you most worried about on the trip? Um, I'm most worried about all of us are, it's probably wild dogs. We've heard lots of stories of wild dogs being out there. The other thing, of course, is the logistics of actually getting there. Um, we're going to be taking the support group. Uh, and yeah, actually riding the 400 Ks without anything on their heads is obviously a big thing as well. Susie, you're also trying to get a professional documentary maker to come along. How are you hoping to fund that? We've actually launched a Kickstarter campaign and that's separate from our fundraising efforts. We are approached on the by a Which was just 
it's just amazing because it's only been up since Friday night. Um, some of the comments have been spectacular and I really like one post where she, she goes, I can't ride my horse 400 metres without a ride and these guys are doing 400 k's. And that's really stuck with me. We've had a couple of negative comments too, simply because what we're doing is very challenging to a lot of people. They just can't understand how you could do this safely. Um, and they, they have a view that we haven't assessed all the risks. We've been training for 12 months. We, we know that there's trains out there. We know that there's traffic out there. We, we're anticipating all those things. And we've done a lot of groundwork and training to make sure that we're safe. Well, if people do want to get involved in the Kickstarter campaign or see the video, how can they do that? Well, I think if you go to Kickstarter and just put in Rainless or Raw Linner, you'll it'll come up. Otherwise, go to our Facebook page, which is the, I'm sure there's a link on the ABC website, and you can actually see our updates as we go. Well, thank you so much, all three of you, uh, Susie Williams, Robin Lonsdale, and Jill Johnston. Three ladies who are riding their horses are uh, Rainless and Riderless to the Rolling Off for the Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Kirsten.